Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and I have a fun, easy, super affordable project to show you today. I have a couple examples of it because I've done this twice before, uh, and it mainly involves brown craft paper and books. And your books can be absolutely whatever. I usually use hardcover, but you could use soft cover. It could be books that you have. This is not going to destroy your books. Or it could be something like these that are from Dollar Tree. So as you're hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle all that good stuff. All right. So like I said, it mainly involves brown craft paper. And here's the thing about brown craft paper. It's impossible to work with it because it wants to just do its thing and roll up. And also, this particular roll right here is Dollar Tree, which is not good quality. The, the um, paper, the brown craft paper, or they call it postal wrapping paper, that is the best is this stuff from Scotch. And I think I picked it up at Target, but you can get it off supply. It just isn't going to be in the crafting section. It's going to be with the office stuff. Um, you can get it at Target, Walmart, Office Depot, you know, pretty much everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. And before I came live, I got the rest of that postal wrapping paper out. And it was doing that roll-up thing. So spent a few minutes with my iron set on cotton or just a little bit below that. No steam. Just ironing my paper so that it will be easier to work with. Which seems strange. I know most people don't iron paper. And I don't generally either. Except when it just wants to keep rolling itself up and it's like rustling a snake. So let me put my iron aside. Okay, and let's talk about what we're going to make and then we'll actually do it. We are going to make book covers that we decorate. And like I said, they are completely not going to hurt your books. So you could buy um, you could buy thrift store books, oops, sorry. Uh, you could buy Dollar Tree books, you could use books that you already have. And these are some examples right here. I have two stacks to show you. Um, these ones I made the more complicated way where you have to fold them. I'm gonna do the next one super easy. Anyways, um, this was part of a craft club exclusive stencil, but you get the idea for it. It's just a book wrapped like, like we did when we were in elementary school and we had to make those book covers out of paper grocery bags. Anyone remember that? Here's another one. Same deal. Oops. And here's another one. And I did the, um, the back too. And these just look pretty in a stack or individually. Okay, so that's one set to show you. Another set is dusty. I did these so long ago. So long ago. Probably close to three years ago. And these are just hardcover books. They're sitting on my coffee table on a little tray. And basically what I concentrated on was the spine. So I have this sitting on a tray on my coffee table and I'll usually put a little pot or something decorative. <laughs> Not a container of squeegees, but you know, something cute that's seasonal on top of it. Um, and these projects cost nothing. The stencils that we're going to use are reusable many, 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 many times, many times. Like, I think they say 20, but I have some that I've used 20, 30, 40, or more times. They get a little yucky looking, but they still work just fine. So, it's, you're, you're 
using pennies worth of paper and a little bit of chalk paste and a stencil. So practically free is what I would say about these. Okay, so let me show you how you do it. All right, I have these books here and it really doesn't even matter what they're about. However, this is just me. Um, timeless skincare and beauty for women over 40. This actually could be a good book that I might want to read, but I'm not going to hurt it in any way. These all came from Dollar Tree. The only thing I say about books is that I know they have all kinds of, if you go to Dollar Tree, um, they have all kinds of different subjects, but I just won't buy anything that, um, that I find offensive or contrary to my Christian faith because I don't want to have objects like that in my house, period. Even if you can't see what the cover is. Um, so this one's about mystery, first love, and long-held secrets. And I don't know what this one's about. Anyways. Okay. So what I did, and what we will do, is we're going to remove the jacket. And you know, you can have tons of times just stenciled right on the hard cover and then I painted the spine so that you can see what the book used to be and that's a pretty way to do it but for this style we're just going to make little book jackets and I just took my little book jacket off I laid it on that big piece of paper Trace it, whoops, and cut it out. That's the easiest way to do it that I have found. And then I'll toss this. Um, okay, and this is what I have. And then I kind of bolt creased it a little bit so I can see uh, where things were, where it would be folded. And for this one in particular, I used this adorable for summer. This adorable flower and dragonfly stencil from MagnoliaDIY.com and some of this glittering chalk paste. And we'll put it on and then we'll start from the very beginning and I'll show you how to do all of it uh, live. A little bit of painter's tape when I was working on this and I'll show you that in just a minute but I'm just going to use a piece of scotch tape that's really all you need entire um, front. I could have just done a small stencil, but I did want to make sure that I had my spine done. And so look how quick and easy that is. Um, one tip I will tell you right now is if you could possibly get books that have a white cover instead of red or that are tan for this project or even I think even black is going to be more blendable than a red book. All right, but this is the super simple kind. All right, let's do let's do this medium one next. So I'm going to take the cover off. Let's see what that one looks like from Dollar Tree. Let me get my paper. I will need to be going. Okay, I'm going to put a couple of heavy things, or heavy-ish things, down to hold my book jacket. 
and then I'm just going to trace it. Whoops, and it does not have to be perfect for this kind of a project. where I am repurposing something, especially if it's something that I already have, like books. I don't know how you feel about that, but uh, yesterday we did some beautiful, I thought, um, tarnished silver platters from thrift stores. get it to crease where I will want it to go. I want this pretty snug. Okay, so I basically have it figured out where it will go. I'm going to crease the spine so I know where that is too. And I will dig out the other videos that I have done of these kind of projects and I'll put, um, I'll, it, YouTube's the easiest, so I'll put my YouTube channel links for those videos in the comments for you. Okay, so looking at this, now I can tell what's what and where's what? And here's what you can do. You can cover the whole entire thing, including the parts that you're going to fold in and take to your book. Or you could just cover the part that will show, front and back and the spine. Or you could just do the spine. Or you could just do the front. I mean, there's so many options. And I personally really love... Uh, all over patterns. So I pulled out a few to show you, um, but we're going to actually do something a little different with a different stencil. But anyways, okay, this is the one I just showed you, and it's dragonflies and flowers. This is one I've used a lot for a lot of different things, and it's an all over cross pattern. And I did another book cover with it using canvas duck on a Bible that a friend gave me when I was in my first year of college. So you can see how pretty that turned out. It's just ink on canvas duck. Uh, and I did this video a while ago, so let me know if you want to look at it. Um, that's not what I wanted to show you, but this is a pretty stencil. And this is not what I wanted to show you either, but you know what, if you have a big book, this part could be beautiful. This is the behold. I stand at the door and knock if anyone has a go. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will eat with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20. I did not mean to pull that one. Okay, this one. This 
a little wrinkled. I did not put it back on the stencil backing very well. There we go. Anyways, this is called filigree leaf. This would be fabulous. This is called flower power. It would be fabulous. This is all over roses. It would be fabulous. Stay with me because I'm going to rip through these. This is my favorite of all time. And it is called Victorian Pattern. You could use um, the Mandela Lace. You could use this pretty one, which I think is called Arabesque uh, Tiles or Moroccan Tiles or something like that. Here's another pretty one. Um, here is the butterfly one that I showed you on one of those books. Fall leaves. Uh, I mean, we won't keep going through this. Let me just show you a couple more. This is cute lemon pattern. Oh, this is adorable. I don't think I've used this yet, but it really is adorable. This is an all over mushroom one. There's all these geometric um, designs. Oh my gosh. Magnolia has some seriously fabulous all over pattern stencils. Here's a fleur de lis. So, those are all options of what I could use on any of those different parts of a book cover. But what we're going to do is we're just going to decorate the front so you can see how easy that is. And I used this stencil yesterday also. This is perhaps you were created for such a time as this. It's um, Esther 414. And I've done a ton of projects with the whole thing. I've also done a ton of projects just with this beautiful little set of flowers. And you'll notice my stencil looks a little cruddy. That's because I've used it a lot, and they can, they can get a little stained on the front, but as long as you wash them promptly, do not ever use any kind of actual paint on them. Paint will reduce their life expectancy to one or two uses, and you're going to want to use this this year, next year, the year after, 20, 30, 40 times. So if you take care of it and never use any kind of paint on it, just chalk paste, ink, etching cream, uh, um, that burning cream. I'm trying to think of some different kinds of things. Anyways, just no acrylic paint, no craft paint, no chalk paint, no house paint, no latex paint, no milk paint. You don't want to use any of those things. So we're going to do this. And they have a bunch. This would be pretty too. And if it was big enough, this would be a beautiful one to put on the front. So looking here because I know I have more. I guess I don't have them out right now. But there's lots, lots of fake options. And so we're going to use this part, this floral part. And I know what's what and where's where on this because I have um, creased it. If I was going to do like an all over pattern, I would put a little bit of blue tape right where I wanted a crisp line, like this. But we're just doing the front. So I don't need any blue tape for that. And um, this has been fuzzed and used so many times, but you can fuzz your stencils on something like this. It's a little t-shirt dress, on a pair of jeans, on a low lint tea towel, that kind of thing. Okay, let's, let me see for a moment. I want this to be sort of centered. I'm not going to do the words, or the um, address in the Bible, just the flowers. And I'm using this, it's chalk paste. It's going to dry hard and be just fine. I literally made this stack several, two, three years ago, and it's been sitting on my coffee table, and this chalk paste has never crumbled and fallen off, and I did nothing to it that I can remember. 
to um, make it permanent. It just is permanent at, on paper until it would get wet or get bumped really hard. Um, so I am using this chalk paste, which is called Glittering White. Yeah. It's got just a little bit of a sparkle to it. And let's just go ahead and take some blobs. And then I'm pushing it through the holes on my stencil. I am not going to keep going over and over and over it because that is when it can kind of get sucked into the fibers of this paper. Oops, okay, well I did mess up, so I will have to do the, uh, I was talking and forgot what I was doing. I will have to do the Esther 414. So now I'm just pulling the big globs off and putting my excess back. This is what that looks like. Oh, it's so pretty. And now I'm glad I put that, the, um, the address to Esther 414 on here. So this is going to go in my little tub of water over here, face down until I can get out to the kitchen to spray it off with cool water, and then I'll lay it on the counter with the sticky side up to dry. I don't want to mess it up, but that's basically what it's going to look like. And let's see if we can put it on our book. Um, without smudging it. I don't know. I'm going to try. Get my tape ready to go. I mean, this is so super simple. The other sleeves that I did, oh shoot, I did just put my finger in it, but I didn't smudge it, so yay. Um, the other sleeves that I made are a little more complicated and they fold more over the book, but this works just great. So see how pretty this stack of books could be? I think it's lovely. And you can just set it out. It can be standing. It can be laying down. You can use twine or ribbon or something like that to tie your books together. So tell me what you guys think. Did you like this quick and easy and super affordable idea that started out with ironing paper? Let's see. Can I get everything in my picture? I hope you did. I hope you got tons of ideas and you saw just how super simple it was. When you're sick of it, or if you did something seasonal, you can use any color of chalk paste, by the way. Um, although the lighter colors do show up better on the brown craft paper. Um, but you can always pull your jackets off and toss them when you want to do something different. Or you can pull the jackets off and just set them aside until next year when you might want to reuse them again. And each book is just a few pennies worth of paper um, and a cent or two of electricity to iron the paper before you got started. Anyways, I hope you liked these ideas and that you saw just how super simple it is. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you would like my complete supply list. I would be glad to get that for you, or if you want a replay, if you um, missed part of the beginning and you wanted to, oh, I see another book, let me grab it, stay with me. This was a fun book jacket that I turned into a shelf, or like a, a riser. Gosh, I did this, 
I don't know if it was last summer or the summer before. It's the same thing, basically. It's a hardcover book. And for this one, I used that Mandela lace stencil and a couple different colors of blue chalk paste. I glued some legs on the bottom, put this little, tied it kind of closed and put this little decorative thing right here. And this is a cute little riser. So, tons of different things that you can do. Um, I will, what was the all over pattern? Okay, well, the one I just did, this one, is Dragonfly, and I'll get you links so you don't have to hunt it down. This all over pattern here is the butterfly one. Um, this all over pattern and this all over pattern are not available anymore, I'm sorry. This one is my favorite, it's the Victoria pattern, but you could use absolutely any all over pattern that you like or that is, uh, you know, the right theme or whatever for your decor or if you're doing seasonal decorating for the season. Anyways, let me know if I can get anything for you or if you have questions, feel free to sprinkle. Thanks so much for watching. I will get pictures taken and put them here in these comments. I will also put them just on my page, DIY Dreaming, so check back for that. Uh, have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for more craft projects that are going to be quick and easy, affordable, sometimes a little different, and they're mostly going to involve either faith, family, or flowers. Bye.